Welcome everyone to another edition of our inaugural season of Masonic Light Talk. I'm your host, Past Master Rod Funderburk of Bivouac Lodge number 503, where we are hailing from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Bivouac is a part of the 30th District, where my worshipful master is Dewan A. Muhammad, and our district deputy is Terry Andrews. Today we have with us two very special guests. We have Grandmaster Sean Bradshaw, who is the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Ancient, Free, and Accepted Masons of North Carolina, whose headquarters is in Raleigh, North Carolina. But, Grand Master Bradshaw, you do reside in Greensboro, correct? That's correct. Greensboro. Okay, good. How are you doing this evening? Doing very well. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here. And we also have his counterpart, which is Grand Master Daniel L. D.T. Thompson, who is the Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge, of Free and Accepted Masons of North Carolina and Jurisdictions Incorporated, whose headquarters are located in Durham, North Carolina. And Grandmaster D.T. Thompson, you do reside in Fayetteville, correct? Yes, sir. Good deal. How are you doing this evening? Doing fine, sir. Thank you. Good, good. Grandmasters, I want to thank both of you all for being here this evening and taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today on Masonic Light Talk. But before we get started, I would like for each of you to just take a few moments and tell our listening audience a little about yourself, maybe give a brief synopsis on how your Masonic journey has been and how you both have arrived at the position of Grand Master. Yeah, I'll start, sure. Uh, the, the brief explanation is I grew up without a father. And uh, after getting married and the birth of my son, I realized I needed a, a, a father figures role models, if you will. And the fraternity, Freemasonry, <clears throat> had always been sort of in the periphery of my life. Uh, but the, the birth of my son was the, was the impetus to actually go do more research, eventually ask, and join the fraternity. As far as you know, the path to becoming Grand Master, I only asked one question, if, how to become a Mason. And that's, everything else from that was, you know, whatever I did, I did. And if people seemed to like it or thought that I had some leadership qualities, uh, they they asked me to do stuff, and I did it. And that's sort of I, I've always done the best I could, and, and you know, am, am glad to be in this position, able to uh, lend my thoughts and ideas about where the fraternity needs to go. But that's pretty much it. Beautiful, DT. Starts with a man named Daniel Thompson, my father. I saw him saw him when he passed, I saw Masons come and do their Masonic rites. After that, after that, I met mate I met men in my life. Jerome Myers who gave me my petition. I met Claude Bayard. I met a Robert Walker. I met Nathaniel Johnson. I met a Ulysses Ann Dawson. I met Masons. Um the path to get Grand Master. I started out in the Royal, Royal Arch, went from Royal Arch to Royal Select, the Knights Templar, got to let the Grand Master. People gave me an opportunity, and I try to give back now. Beautiful, and I must say that, you know, your path to Grand Master is a path that anybody can take who joins the organization if they desire to do so. Uh, but I like how you have mentioned that there were important male figures in your life mm -hmm. that allowed you and helped you to get to where you are, which is very important. Yes. And thank you both for sharing that. So let's jump right into it. Uh, for those of you listening out there who may not be a part of the Masonic family, I want to give you guys just a small piece of background information on why today is even possible to have these two grandmasters sitting here in front of me and in front of you. Uh, because some people could say that they come from two completely different worlds. And in layman terms, there are two organizations, Masonic organizations, basically one black, which is referred to as Prince Hall Masons, and one white, which is referred to as Ancient, Free, and Accepted Masons. So before November 2008, these two Masonic groups did not officially recognize each other as Brother Masons. It's weird because we all could go to work together. We could go and sit and eat lunch together. We could go to one another's houses and visit and have a good time, go swimming, go to the beach, even go on vacation. But we were not sitting in lodge together. 
And I would talk about it with some of my ancient free and accepted friends, uh, such as Chad Delp and Todd Hearn. Mm -hmm. uh, and these guys are both, or brothers are both, part of Kernersville 669. So it's just always interesting to us of the things that we could do individually outside of masonry, mm -hmm. but we weren't doing it inside of the brotherhood. So it did take some work and some years for both bodies to be ready to recognize one another. But in November of 2008, which is a historical time, a resolution was signed by Reverend David Cash, who was the Grand Master of the Ancient Free and Accepted Masons, and also his counterpart was there, Milton F. Toby Fitch, who was Grand Master of Prince Hall Free and Accepted Masons. They signed this document recognizing one another in the old house chamber of the state capitol in Raleigh, North Carolina. And there were so many people there that not only was the uh, old chamber full, but the old house chamber was full. Mm -hmm. um, and then they went into the old Senate chamber and it became full. So there was an overflow. And in this overflow, what happened was some individuals had to watch the signing of this resolution on a big screen TV outside of those two chambers. So Grandmasters, my first question to you is, you know, has the months approached, uh, maybe in the, even in the springtime of 2008, and you knew that this signing was going to take place. How were your feelings coming up to that signing? And then once that recognition ceremony took place, what did that mean to you? Grandmaster Bradshaw. So first, leading up to it, a lot of pride. Um, I joined the fraternity in 1997, which was the first year, as I recall, that the, from our point of view, the Prince Hall recognition really started heating up, a lot of discussion. And to be quite honest, I was disappointed uh, from what I heard from some of the brethren in my lodges. I was uh, displeased. But I understood for change to take place, those of us who were in favor of recognition had to stay involved and continue to push for it. And so that's what I did. I, I, I intentionally stayed involved. Uh, I, I worked my way through the chairs. When it came time and I was in a, a position to vote in favor of it, I voted in favor of it every time. Um, unfortunately, that was not the year that it passed, none of those years. Uh, I was backstage the year that the, our, our vote count came back and, and it passed. And I saw the numbers and I was, I was rooting for it and thrilled. So leading up to it, even before that spring or the, the actual signing, you know, I, I was excited for it. I was there at the, at the signing uh, at the Capitol building. I was one of the lucky ones who got there early enough to get <laughs> an actual view of it. And, uh, you know, the, the, interestingly enough, everything about that day was a blur except, and I'm sure you guys remember it, and if I had thought about it beforehand, I would have brought the pen. We had special mm -hmm. pens mm -hmm. made. It was a, a brown hand and a, mm -hmm. and, a, and a Caucasian hand together, yes. shaking hands, mm -hmm. showing that not only as a, 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 the recognition that happened, but a symbol of the unity between our two Grand Lodges uh, and the brotherhood that not only could we share outside the Lodge, but now also inside the Lodge. Yes, that, that, that was something else. I remember when that <laughs> happened, and we also did a ceremony over at Kernersville 669 because there were some brothers from Prince Hall who didn't have that pen that you spoke of. And at the time, I think Chad Delp was the master, and he uh, invited as many brothers that could make it from the 30th district over to Kernersville 669, and they did a degree that day, and it was a third degree. And after the third degree, he called up all the Prince Hall Masons to the altar, and he presented all of us with mm -hmm. one of those pens. And I still have mine, and I'm sure all of the brothers yeah. from the 30th district who attended that day still have theirs and that was just you know an awesome time frame. DT when that time was coming up uh, do you remember how you were feeling as that time was approaching as well as when that day actually came and it happened? It was, it was a great day because finally the tenets of brotherly love, relief and truth were kind of like justice. It became colorblind. Mm -hmm. We actually became brothers. It wasn't he's my AM white brother Sean was my brother, mm -hmm. and we were two. We were two brothers. 
There was no color barrier, no color divide. We were brothers. And it's like, it's like, and it's like a marriage. You, you still got to work at it, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah. even, even in 2019, right. I mean, you still got to work at it, though. I mean, and let's just be honest. There's some people who probably still don't like the idea. But it's here. And, and in 2019, I had to fight for it this year as Grandmaster because of recognition, because of an action of do we recognize a bogus or clandestine Grand Lodge? Mm -hmm. If, because if, if North Carolina, if Prince Hall Grand Lodge, North Carolina had to recognize a Grand Lodge and Grand Lodge of England don't recognize, we would have lost recognition with our, our counterparts in North Carolina. So you still got to fight to keep what you have. So in 2008, it was great. And here it is 11 years later, we're still fighting to keep what we have. North Carolina showed what right looks like. Mm -hmm. And 11 years after that, the York right in North Carolina, I'm proud to say last year, got it right also because the the capitula, the cryptic, and the chivalric, the raw arts, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the raw select, and the nice templar, they also signed recognitions between those three houses. So in North Carolina, not only does the symbolic have recognition, we also have it in the raw arts, the raw select, and the nice templar. So in North Carolina, those four houses all have recognition. So North Carolina's got it right. You, you know, DT, if I can just jump in real quick, Ryan. please. Um, one one interesting story uh, that you guys may not be aware of, you may have heard this, is uh, North Carolina, uh, our Grand Lodge, uh, or used to be a part of what we call the, the Southeast Regional Conference of mm -hmm. Grand Masters. It was, you know, just groupings. You guys probably have something similar to that. And after recognition, of course, Virginia had recognized uh, their Prince Hall counterparts. North Carolina recognized uh, our Prince Hall counterparts, but no one else in the South. And as a result, there was some animosity amongst the, uh, the members of that Southeast Conference to the point that uh, we left. We, we belong wow. to the Northeast Conference now <laughs> because, wow. Wow. Uh, and, and have for a number of years. And, you know, at some point we may come back to the Southeast. Uh, uh, I'm sure you guys are very well aware, you know, several of the southern states have uh, taken that step for recognition. And uh, as long as that continues, we, we may go back. But you know, we felt the pressure, too, just like, you know, I'm sure you guys felt some pressure. Um, but but the, the right stance, the moral stance, was recognition. And we were going to do what was right. Oh, yeah. And we definitely appreciate you for doing that. And that's part of what masonry is all about. We're all good men, but part of what we are here for is to become better men. Mm -hmm. And as you both just said, it's about what's doing what's right. Mm -hmm. So since that signing, what do you both think of the progress that has been made uh, between the Masonic brothers on both sides? And what else would you like to see happen among the brothers? DT? Mm. Well, I mean, we, we have one joint venture I know of called the Pig Jig that we work on. Right. And I mean, I mean, when I was Deputy Grandmaster, we had one meeting. We called the North Carolina Masonic Commission. We sat down trying to do more events together. We wanted to do the 10-year anniversary recognition. We didn't pull that one off. Maybe me and Sean can get together and, and we can put that together this year. Hopefully, we can pull that, pull that off. I mean, but we can do more community projects. I know they do... I think Sean and y'all do a blood drive. Yes. Maybe we can do the blood drive with y'all and do one in Greensboro, do one in Charlotte, do one in Wilmington. I know we have our sesquicentennial coming up in the 29th of February, the 1st of, Mar 1st of March. You will get the invitation to come to that and join us with that part, mm -hmm. whatever events y'all have. I mean, so there's more things we can do, more community projects, giving back to the community. So, I mean, so there's a lot of things we can do, book, dr book bag drives, food can drives, whatever it is, give back coat drives, whatever whatever project they have. So there's a lot of things we can do to give back to the community. I mean, it's limitless. It's limitless what we can do. It's just get, sitting down at the table, just drawing it out and just doing it. I, you know, I would say it's as much about just communicating with each other. Yeah. Um, uh, Rodney, you've been there. I've, I've uh, been to the lodge here in Winston. Uh, had the opportunity as I was going through the Grand Line, uh, I think three years in a row, I, I went to first degree initiations mm -hmm. uh, with your guys. That was important to me uh, as a member of the Grand Line to show 
my personal support for bringing the, the two Grand Lodges together in a way that uh, uh, really embodied the brotherhood that we have uh, to show that, that you know, we, we, we can get together on things. I know, Rodney, you and Chad, your special relationship, the special relationship that you guys have uh, between your, your two lodges. I hear about that all over the state. Now, there are certain areas where it's not as integrated, we'll say, where Prince mm -hmm. Hall and, and AF and AM do not get together as much, but there are a lot of areas where they do, and I, I suspect at the local level, um, that's where that's where the community can really be built, as uh, as say Kernersville has certain events coming up. I've I've seen Prince Hall Masons at, at like our not lodge meetings, but at the charity events and the other Masonic events. That's where it really makes a difference to the community. We can do a lot of stuff at the Grand Lodge level, and I I, I am encouraged that the DT and I will work together to do more at that level. But the reality is, at least in my view. The, the community level, the lodge level, that, that's where it really makes the difference. Yes, you're exactly right about that. And I'm glad you mentioned that because even one of the privileges that come along with that uh, recognition, of course, is to be able to sit in lodge. But the community, that's the area that really benefits, you know, from the recognition and the signing. You know, yeah, we get to go and sit in lodge. We get to go and we get to do watch degree work or participate in degree work if need be. But the community can benefit from some of the fundraisers that we have. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Bivouac's largest fundraiser is a motorcycle charity ride. Mm -hmm. And we have participation from, of course, Kernersville 669. But we also have participation from Clemens Lodge, uh, number 755, uh, Salem Lodge right here where we are now. They come over. They participate. And this is where the, the community benefits in mm -hmm. this particular charity that we do. The kids are the ones who oh, actually sure. benefit, and the schools benefit because we're able to give those funds away to the Title I schools, uh, and that's the money that's left over from the charity ride when we give away book bags and school supplies. And uh, so it is really a great thing uh, when we get together, and that signing has really affected our community. And even we, Bibwack Lodge and some brothers from the 30th District, have had the opportunity to participate in Clemens Lodge number 755. They have a golf tournament, right. and uh, and that goes back to the uh, Masonic um, Children's right. Home, That's right. uh, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who don't really know about the Masonic Children's Home, do you two mind talking about uh, the Masonic Children's Home and what it's all about and what we try and do for the Masonic Children's Home? I, I'll speak to uh, the Masonic Home for Children in Oxford. Um, of course, I'm a, I'm a board member there. I've uh, been working with them for a number of years. Uh, as of today, we support 50 children, uh, 51, sorry, 51 children. Um, a beautiful campus. One of our big events that we have, which we do get some Prince Hall uh, 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 support from, is we have a, <clears throat> we call it homecoming. Mm -hmm. It's a parade, the shrine and all that shows up. Uh, and then that's followed by a, a, a smaller version of the pig jig. It's a, it's a barbecue <laughs> contest. And we do have, we have brethren uh, who've come down from uh, as far as New Hampshire, I think, and competed. And uh, we've had Prince Hall brethren come down from Maryland mm -hmm. who competed. Um, so that's the, the, the support for that particular um, home. Of course, uh, we also do our own internal charities and the charities you know, that the lodges put on. Um, we're more than happy, uh, Prince Hall supports us, we're more than happy to help support you guys in, in any way we can. Uh, it, it's just a matter of, you know, getting the word out sometimes and, and letting us know and we'll have guys show up. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, what you do because some of what you mentioned kind of mirrors what we do for our children's home. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. We have the Grand Lodge North Carolina, we support Central Children's Home. Mm -hmm. We have um, Central Children's Home Day the third third Saturday in June and like we say we support them it was started um, back by George B. White he was a um, past grandmaster he was also he left from being grandmaster being a senator and went and started got the funds to start um, Central Children's Home and we support Central Children's Home with their services and everything right now we have a um, fundraiser going on right now where we're trying to raise it's called 12 for 12 which what we're doing right now they're trying to get 8,000 members to donate twelve dollars, we're trying to raise a, a hundred thousand dollar campaign, trying to trying to do some 
um, work, to, work towards children home. Okay. So we're working on that part right now, and we'd love for y'all to help support us with that part also. We get to get, get, uh, work, work on that one. I'm sure there's some some of our brethren out there who will be more than happy to help and contribute any way they can. Beautiful. That's what it's all about. I mean, the the two grandmasters who are at the top of the food chain coming together, <laughs> talking. I won't, you know, ask you about any of the projects that you guys are collaborating on because I know y'all have, have got them and, and hopefully we'll be hearing what they are soon. But, you know, one of the things that I've done has as I was able to get you two here together, and again, thank you for coming out. I tried to go and talk to brothers uh, from the Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons as well as some of the brothers from Prince Hall and just ask, was there anything that maybe they wanted to know that would, you know, pique their interest? And one of the questions uh, that came up was some of the brothers expressed that they would like to see possibly a lodge erected that will house both Prince Hall and ancient brothers. And of course, for this lodge to exist, they wanted it to be fully integrated with Masons from both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts on what these brothers are expressing? Any, any thoughts on something like that happening? Well, I would be in favor of, uh, you know, any level of um, collaboration in that way. I think, uh, you know, there, there might be, uh, to, to be honest, there might be some logistics or some code issues on our side in terms of how, you, how the two groups would come together to actually fund it. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we have, you know, at least in, in, in our code, we have some restrictions around uh, uh, joint ventures or what we call them. Um, but with that said, there, there's certainly no reason that uh, a, a new building couldn't be built with that purpose in mind. And uh, either Prince Hall, you know, fully funded it or the AF and AM brethren fully funded it. And, and we, we are tenants together within that building. Uh, and, and that way, uh, again, going back to this, the thought of the community, the community sees it as, as one group. It's not seen as, well, there's the Prince Hall group over there, or they don't even know that <laughs> sometimes. That they just see there's Masons over there and there's Masons over here. This one's predominantly black. This one's predominantly white. Uh, they see us all together in their mind, then there's no difference. Right. And I think that that would be very positive. There are still some logistics that we would have to, right. to, to look at, but if it, were, uh, if it were brought to us, we would, look, we would look very seriously at how we could make it happen. Okay, good deal. And, and like I said, that was just one of the questions that had, had come up. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on any of that, DT? I like the idea. I mean, it kind of goes into the idea that what we put at the Grand Lodge um, this past year, where we said with the expansion plan of if we can expand 101 East Main, the investors go in there, and if we can purchase the land, we're talking about purchasing that 42 acres. Mm -hmm. If we can get that 42 acres of land, well, we would have the land, Sean, to put the, build, <laughs> to put the building on. So if I can get the land, I can have the land to put the building on, and we can work with your code and my code. Hey, I got the land. Let's go put the building on it. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Has you two continued to collaborate and figure out how we can continue to grow together, uh, you know, continue to be as one brotherhood together, continue to do what we can in the community together. You know, if there are any projects that you need help on, uh, I think maybe I can volunteer. And I'm thinking I can maybe volunteer one person from uh, the ancient side, which is Chad Delt, my yeah. buddy, and he, and he may smack me in the head for volunteering him without talking to him. But, uh, you know, masonry is something that is in our hearts, and we love it, and we enjoy it. And I want to thank you both again for being on here, and I want to thank you for, you know, pouring out what's been in your hearts on this platform, especially, you know, the way you've shown that the Masonic Brotherhood is alive and strong, and that Prince Hall and ancient Masons can work together for the benefit of the good for all mankind. And I'm hoping that we can get back together fairly soon on this type of platform and maybe follow up. Uh, in the meantime, another question has arisen. And, you know, some folks have said, oh, so you're getting both the Grand Masters together to, you know, kind of dialogue and talk a little bit. And uh, some other people have said, well, what about us? So my question is, will you two be the only Grand Lodge officers that will have a joint interview such as this in this type of form? <laughs> Or would you like to see others in your immediate line 
possibly, you know, take part with their counterparts and kind of see, you know, what they may be able to collaborate on. That way, everything is not necessarily just on uh, Grandmaster Bradshaw and Grandmaster Thompson, just your two plates, because I know you guys are completely busy. Any thoughts on that? DT, I would. I mean, first. yeah, they welcome. They welcome to talk. I mean, we started what we called the North Carolina North Carolina um, Masonic Commission. I mean, when we started it, it was myself, Sean, what, the Deputy Grandmasters, the Grand Senior Wardens, Grand Junior Wardens, oh, yeah. and two two members. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we started dialogue two years ago with mm -hmm. the Deputy Grandmasters and Wardens. So, it's, we started it. So. Yeah, there's no problem with the other wardens and everybody else talking. I mean, that that's how you get to know each other. I mean, mm -hmm. me and Sean met, what, three years ago? I think Sean was three, Grand yeah. Junior Warden. Mm -hmm. When I was Grand Junior Warden, so, I mean, you, it's about, mainly it's about relationships. Right. Yes. It's, it's not about, yeah, Sean's Grandmaster, I'm Grandmaster, but he's Sean, I'm DT. Mm -hmm. I mean, throw the titles to the side. Yeah, he's Sean, I'm DT. When we go to the side, it's Sean and DT. When we get for the brothers, yeah, it's Grandmaster, Grandmaster, but it's Sean and DT. Right. Sean said, well, you got to say to DT, DT, we say, you got to say to Sean, and we agree, we agree to disagree, but if it's all said and done, we say we got to say and move on. You're exactly right. I mean, that's we don't pull no punches. And that's how it should be, you know, yeah. completely open, yes. honest, you know, that is what brotherhood, brothers, are all about. But it's all done in respect, though. That's right. That's right. I, I would I would say, you know, our line is progressive. Uh, I'm not going to get voted as grandmaster again. <laughs> that's, not, that's that's not the way we typically do it. Um, uh, so it would make sense for our you know counterparts at the deputy grandmaster, senior and junior grand warden level at least to have some sort of dialogue mm -hmm. so that. Um, uh, particularly on our side, uh, on the progressive line side, um, there's some already a relationship established. As DT mentioned, we've known each other for a number of years, so we, we had that already, but not all of our counterparts do. Um, right. And so uh, that we, we get to meet at each other's annual communication sometimes, but that's very limited. A, a right. little bit more, I think, would be, would be positive. Oh, yeah. yeah. I definitely agree with that. Well, Grandmasters, before we end this edition of Masonic Light Talk, are there any closing thoughts that you would like to share maybe with the listening audience? Is there anything that you two would like to share with one another in the dialogue? Maybe something we haven't covered, something that you think is pretty important that you'd just like to kind of talk about as brothers? Hmm. I do. Oh, you want to uh, secret talk? No, well, we don't. Well, well, because we have a listening audience, you know, we're, we're, we're not a society yeah. of secrets. We just happen to be yeah. Masons it's, that have some secrets here real, and there. It's, 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 me and Sean, it's real, it's, real, it's real easy. I'm committed to supporting him and his projects, and whatever the Prince Hall Grand Lodge can do to support you and your Grand Lodge and your projects, we're here to commit to support you. You got my 100% support on whatever you're doing and my friendship forever. Thank you so much, DT. And know that the same is true here. Let me say a, a little additional item. I always love your poems. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I look forward to them. You, you, you start every important talk you do with a poem that is fitting for that time. And in addition to that, your leadership for Prince Hall, the one thing I have observed is that you are a man of action. It's not just the ideas, it's getting it done. And I think that's important. There's a lot of talk that happens in the lodges, in the Grand Lodges, but there's, masonry's slow to do stuff. You're not slow to get stuff done. I have noticed that, and I, I applaud you for it. And if you don't mind, I have a one of my Grand Master's pins, and I'd like to pin it on. I don't like that mine, but I'm gonna give you mine. We're gonna make North Carolina look what white look like. It is. Love you, buddy. Love you too, Thank you. That is what it is all about. That right there. You know, I want to say I think it's great 
that we as Prince Hall Masons and Ancient and Free and Accepted Masons can come together as brothers and practice masonry. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about the art of becoming a better man in our homes, yes. with our families, just in our everyday lives. You know, the creator of us all, he's smiling down on YouTube, especially right now, saying, this is how I envision mankind to be able to get along with one another. I know he's smiling down saying that. So Grandmasters, I wish both of you luck as you travel and you work during this Masonic year. If there's anything that I can do to aid or assist you, please don't hesitate to call me. God bless both of you and may heaven continue to smile upon you both. Grandmaster, thank you, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Grandmaster, good, good to see you. Me. Thank you very much. And All I'm right. just going to close it out for our Masonic family. Y'all, please have a seat. Don't y'all stand <laughs> at all. Y'all relax. <laughs> Prince Hall family, I want to thank you for tuning in and listening to this edition of Masonic Light Talk featuring the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of North Carolina Ancient and Free Accepted Masons, Grand Master Sean Bradshaw. And also the Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of North Carolina and Jurisdiction Incorporated. That is Grand Master D.T.L. Thompson. And for those of you who are not a part of the Masonic family, and you may be on the fence and thinking about it, remember, it's not hard. In order to be one, just ask one. I'm your host, Past Master Rod Funderburk of Bivouac Lodge Number 503. I can't wait to see you on the next edition of Masonic Light Talk. Until then, my brothers and sisters, travel light.